I've been learning game development for about six months now, and on October 3rd, I gave myself a challenge, learning how to create a life simulation game in 30 days. For the first two weeks, I uploaded a short video to show a feature I created every day, and now it's been 30 days, so it's time to reveal what I've learned. First, let me show you the things I've created during the first few days, so let's rewind time a bit. Day 1, creating a camera system. I learned how to manage a camera with zoom, rotation and movement features. You can zoom in as close as you want and zoom out to get the full view of the open world. Then you can rotate the camera around to explore the 3D environment easily by clicking on the middle button. And finally, you can move around by using the right click in order to discover your surroundings. Bonus, the cursor changes with each feature you're using. Day 2 of learning how to create a live simulation game. Today I learned how to manage home objects with three simple features, move, rotate and customize. First, the move objects feature is quite easy to use, just click on an object and it will automatically follow your cursor on the ground. Then use the R key to rotate an object 45 degrees at a time, and then I created a simple customization feature, just right click on an object, a panel will show up with color options, just choose the one you like. That's it! Bonus, I created a duplicate feature. Press D to duplicate an object and move it around as you wish. Although I don't even have a delete feature yet, that will be for another video. Day 3 of learning how to create a live simulation game. Today we're still on Home Builder with three new features. Grid, Size and Elevate. The grid allows you to see more easily where your objects are going to be placed and aligned. Then I created a sizing feature to make your objects bigger or smaller using the plus and minus keys. And finally, I added elevation to put your objects on top of each other. Just use the page up or down keys to do that. Bonus of the day, I finally added the delete feature so I'm not drowned in objects anymore. Day 4 of learning how to create a live simulation game. Today I went big by trying to create a walls feature with a dynamic grid builder. So basically when I'm building walls in chunks, I can resize the grid while building to make the most detailed wall shapes. There are three sizes for the grid now, large, medium and small, but I'm thinking of creating a fourth where there's no grid at all, just free building, but we'll see how it goes. This also allows me to build creative rooms like this heart shapes right there. It's for you by the way. Day 5 of learning how to create a life simulation game. Today I worked on footprints for objects colliding and a room selection feature. This one is quite easy to use. Grab the little blue dot to select the entire room and move it around. And this has to work in balance with footprints, but what are they? You see, when you want to place an object next to another one, you don't want them overlapping, right? So the footprint tells the game how big an object is, and if it's colliding, the grid turns red and a little cross shows up. Day 6 of learning how to create a life simulation game. Today I worked on something I've always wanted in such a game, an object creator. This allows me to create unique objects by customizing their shapes and colors. So here's a desk, pretty boring right? Now let's customize the shape of that tabletop. Sharp angles, rounded or squared, it's up to you. I can do the same thing with the desk legs, I'm going to pick this one that I really like. And now let's customize the colors. I can pick anyone I like out of this color palette. See how it went from this to this in just a few clicks. Infinite shapes, infinite colors, infinite possibilities. Day 7 of learning how to create a live simulation game. Today I worked on world tags for the map view. You see, when I zoom out to see the full map, I'd like to know what the buildings are. So let's activate the world view. And now there are little tags on the top of the buildings. They tell me what the venue is when I hover them with my mouse. Little reminder today that all of the features I show are concepts. I'm just trying to learn more about game development with this project in the hope to announce one day that I'm officially working on my first game. Day 8 of learning how to create a life simulation game. Today I made a feature to switch between play modes. Let me tell you about it. This is a third person controller, something you find mostly in adventure games. And in my dream game, I want to be able to switch between this mode and the one I've been showing since last week. So when I press the tab key, I'm going to the map view with the tags and a free camera. But when I press the key again, I'm switching back to the character view like an adventure game. This would be best for the story mode, in my opinion, and the overall immersion in the virtual world. Day 9 of learning how to create a life simulation game. 
today I created from scratch a simple day-night cycle. In order to make this, I had to create a virtual clock that counts the seconds in real life and rotates the sun and moon according to the game's speed. It also allows me to manage the colors and intensity of the lights depending on the time of day. The sunset, for example, gets a yellowish reddish mood, while the night gives us dark blue shadows. Next step is to actually count the minutes and hours of the day, but that will be for another video. All right. After these first 10 days, I worked on other stuff like hair physics, which didn't really go well at first. And then I started to build a small world to create a demo that I'm about to show you. Now, before we get into this, I'd like to remind you that this is a prototype, or a proof of concept in other words. I'm not ready yet to announce that I'm working towards releasing a game like this anytime soon. All of this is still a way for me to learn more about game dev, and boy, it takes a really long time. So thank you to all the lovely patrons who supported me this month, and welcome to the new ones who joined after the Henwald's Legacy video, which you can watch here, by the way. Well, I think it's time to reveal the demo. It's about five minutes of gameplay, and I'll see you right after. Enjoy! Marcelo, how are you today? Hey Sophia, I'm great. What would you like to drink today? Same as usual. Mayor, I'm not sure I'm thirsty today. I'm a bit tired. Some people shouting outside very loudly woke me up. Oh you mean Alan and Henna? Yeah they've been fighting all day and I'm sick of it. If you manage to make them quiet, I'll give you a free drink. Free drink? I'm on it. Again. 
But Alan, I don't want to fight with you anymore. I'm tired. No, come on baby. I'm just saying if we stole a chair from her place she wouldn't even know. I don't care that she has a great apartment. I'm good with mine anyways. But baby, what about my chair? You're hurting my feelings again. You should probably stop talking now. I'm bored. No, come on baby. I'm just saying if we stole a chair from her place she wouldn't even know. Hey Marcelo, I think I figured it out. What are they talking about then? I think Alan is jealous of my apartment, and he wants to steal a chair from me. Henna seemed to be a nice person though. I think she should break up with him. He's toxic, and he wants to steal a chair from me. Oh wow, I did not expect that. Maybe you could enter build mode and duplicate your chair and give it to them. What are you talking about? I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the player. What player? Are we in a simulation? Maybe. Alright, just press the tab key to enter build mode, you'll see. Bye Sophia. Bye weirdo. Alright, even though this is a nice chair, I can't believe you stole it from her, you freak. Listen to me, baby. I'm breaking up with you now. OMG, no. I didn't do it, baby. Goodbye, Alan. Wow, I can't believe all this happened in just a few minutes. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this demo. Back to Arnie now. See you soon for more. Thank you, Sophia. What an absolute weird quest you just got. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this short demo created in just a month and that you understood the way I would create such a game, focused on adventure with a good share of simulation features. I'd also like to thank the amazing Hey Harry and Felix Andre for allowing me to use their beautiful furniture model creations in this project. I'll put a link in the description for their CC. And thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. You can give it a like and comment to help my channel and join my Patreon for further support. The link is in the description as well. That's it for today and I'll see you very soon for a new episode of Game Dev Adventure. Sending love, bye!